Okay, any questions on anything before we start? Okay, so let me start with some, some of your comments from the pre-session quiz. So first one, I don't understand how the current from a battery can increase or decrease depending on resistance. Okay, that was, you are not unique. Whoever said that, you are not alone. Okay, so we're gonna try and address that. Here's what somebody else said. Adding a resistor does not always increase the resistance of the circuit. Do we agree with that or not, that part of the statement? We agree with that? Yeah, sure, that sounds good. If you add a resistor in a parallel circuit, you can decrease the resistance. True, false? True, sounds good. But in a series circuit, current is always the same no matter where you put the resistor. Okay, let's address that one. What do we think of that? We like that? So that's sort of half true and half false, that one. There's some elements of truth to that. But you gotta be a little bit careful about that one, okay? So in a series circuit, current is the same everywhere. Okay, that's a reasonable statement about series circuits. But this is how you want to apply it. Let's say you have a series circuit made up of a battery and two light bulbs, all in series. We had such a circuit drawn the other day on the screen. And we talked about where the current is least, and in fact the current is the same everywhere in that circuit. Okay, so that's fine. Let's say you added a third light bulb to that circuit, so now you had three light bulbs in series with the battery. In that circuit, the current would be the same everywhere, but the overall resistance of the second circuit is larger than the overall resistance of the first circuit, and so the current in the three light bulb circuit is less than the current in the two light bulb circuit. Okay? In the individual series circuits, the current is the same in this one, the current is the same everywhere in the other one, but those are two completely different currents. Are you okay with that? Okay. Okay, oh, well, here's a very long statement. Okay, so uh, Allison's statement was incorrect. True. Because she assumes since a resistor is meant to resist the flow of electrons that every time a resistor is added, the resistance of the circuit increases. You know, it sounds like a reasonable thing to assume on Allison's part, right? You add a resistor, it's got to increase the resistance of the circuit. That's the resistor's job, basically. It's right in the name, right, to resist stuff. But in fact, it, it, it depends on where this resistor is placed. If you put it in parallel, I like this. There are more paths for the electrons to travel in. Okay, the addition of that resistor opens up more lanes. That's a nice one. Okay, you go to the tolls on the turnpike. If they're just a couple of lanes, everybody's backed up. If there's eight lanes open, everybody's going through. Okay, very similar to that. We just open up a new lane at the, uh, at the tolls. Okay, so the charges go through a lot easier. In a series formation, you're putting more of a strain on the already existing single pathway, which is no bueno, okay, my, my Spanish is not very good, but uh, I think I get the gist of what that means. But that's, that's not bad, that's exactly right. Put it in series, you're actually you're making harder for the electrons to go around. Put it in parallel, it's easier, okay? So, so when you apply Ohm's law to a circuit, this is really how you want to think about it, okay? So a battery's hooked up to a circuit, three light bulbs, one light bulb, 17 light bulbs, whatever. Okay, it's hooked up to a circuit. How much current does that battery put out? How much current does it supply to the circuit? Well, it depends. It depends on the total resistance the circuit has. So the battery takes an overall view of what the circuit is. It says, how much total resistance do I have? Based on that number, I know how much current to send out. Okay? So we are, to a first approximation, we say we have a fixed voltage from our battery. Delta V is a constant value. But by fiddling with resistors, adding them in series, adding them in parallel, taking them out, putting them in, et cetera, then we are changing the total resistance that the circuit has. And the battery responds by putting out a different amount of current. So whenever you change the resistance of the circuit, the current changes, the voltage is the one thing that stays fixed. That's our assumption, okay? And even that is not 100% accurate, but to a first approximation, it's not bad, okay? So fiddling around with these resistors, adding them in series or parallel, generally adding them in series 
increases the overall resistance, that decreases I. Adding them in parallel, decreases R, increases I. Okay. Okay, so here's what we're up to today. We're going to talk some more about series and parallel circuits, which is what you spent a lot of time thinking about for the pre-session. And we'll also start thinking about circuits with series and parallel combinations. And we're also going to do this, which was not even on the list, but that's okay. It's good to know, right? Uh, you get a bill from wherever, okay, whoever charges you for electricity. So what is that bill for? What units is it in? What are you getting billed for? Yeah. Okay, so you're getting billed for the number of kilowatt hours you used in a month. Okay. A kilowatt hour is what kind of unit? Power? Something else. What is it? Kilowatt hour. It's actually power units, kilowatts, times time. What's that? Power times time. Yeah, so it's energy. Exactly. It has units of energy. They're actually charging you for how much energy you used in a month. That's like a totally reasonable thing to do. Okay? Use more energy, you get more, charge more. Okay, so if you want to know the cost of a single device in your house, how much it's costing you on a monthly basis, here's how to figure it out. You look up the power rating in kilowatts. Okay, it's actually easier than it sounds. Most things have it stamped right on there somewhere. Sometimes it's in watts, you just got to convert to kilowatts. Uh, you multiply that by the number of hours it's on, and then by the cost per kilowatt hour. <coughs> a kilowatt hour, by the way, you can show is equivalent to 3.6 million joules. That's how many joules is in a kilowatt hour, 3.6 million. How much do you get charged for 3.6 million joules, one kilowatt hour, roughly? 20 cents? Yep. Something on the order of 10 to 20 cents, okay? And if you look up on your clock radio, it'll say 5 watts. That thing's plugged in the whole time, but it's not using much power. 0 0.005 kilowatts, that's what 5 watts is. Microwave, on the other hand, is 1,000 watts, typically. Some of them are 1,200, some of them are 900, et cetera. So that's a kilowatt, approximately. Fortunately, you're not running that thing 24 hours a day. Uh, hair dryer, that's stamped right on the box the hair dryer comes in. <coughs> You often see 1850, 1950, 1725, numbers like that. Those are watts, so in kilowatts, something like 1.8, 1.9 kilowatts. Okay, for the purposes, for our purposes, I'm going to say the cost per kilowatt hour is about 10 cents. Nice round number, okay? And that's actually not too far off from what I personally pay for my uh, electricity. Okay, so we're going to do a calculation. Average house in the United States. TV's on for three hours a day. That's probably an underestimate. But anyway, let's call it three hours a day. How much does this cost on a daily basis to run the TV for three hours a day? There's the equation if you want to use it. Okay, so go for it. So we got uh, big boats for a dollar, and then 10 cents came in second. Okay, somebody, somebody thinks it's $10 a day, so that would be how much for a month? 300 bucks. So you got an awful, I don't know, I think I'd move if I was getting a, a bill for 300 bucks a month. That's just for the TV, right? So we, To do the calculation, you need to know what the power rating is of the TV, right? So typical TV, anybody know what the power rating is? Five watts clock radio, thousand watts microwave, eighteen hundred watts is the hair dryer. Where on the scale is the television? Any idea? Where is it? Any thoughts? A couple hundred watts? Okay. And I looked mine up. Okay, you just look it up, what's on the back. And mine happens to be three hundred and thirty watts. Okay. Uh, this is just an LCD television, so that replaced my old uh, CRT television, which was 75 watts. Okay, so when everybody in the country went out and bought a new television, it cost us a lot more. Okay, so 330 watts, 0.33 kilowatts. 
Okay, so we'll do that calculation. 0.33 kilowatts times three hours times 10 cents per kilowatt hour is 10 cents. That's it, 10 cents a day. And if you think about, you sit in front of your TV for three hours or you go to the movies for two hours, it's like two orders of magnitude difference in price, right? It's incredible, so they're really ripping you off, aren't they? So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, questions on that? Okay, so this is the only thing I'm go really going to tell you about <coughs> what really comes out of a wall socket, okay? To a first approximation, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, treat the wall socket like a 120 volt battery. Your, old, your light bulbs, that's basically how they treat it, okay? They act like they're hooked up to a 120 volt direct current battery. So we have direct current where the current's always going the same way versus alternating current, which is what comes out of the wall socket. And that means the current is going this way, then this way, then this, it's just sloshing back and forth. It's not all going the same way all the time. And it comes, so we say there's 120 volts out of the wall. In fact, the maximum voltage is 170 volts. And then it goes down to zero and then to minus 170 volts and then back up to 170 volts. And for North America, what is this? T, what's the value of the period <coughs> for that cycle? So it's 60 hertz, so that time is 1 60th of a second. That's right. So it goes through these cycles 60 times a second. Okay, so it really does that, but to, for all intents and purposes, especially for light bulbs, we can treat it as a 120 volt battery. Now, a lot of things don't like this, okay? Your laptop, for instance, doesn't like that. Your laptop has like a 13 volt, 18 volt battery in it. And you gotta recharge it by hooking it up to this thing which goes from minus 170 to, to plus 170 and then back 60 times a second. So how do we cope with that? What do we have? Do you plug, yeah. Yeah, exactly right. So you get these big square black things or rectangular things look like bricks, okay? Those are transformers that take the AC and they convert it to direct current. So they'll take 100, 120 volt on average um, AC signal and convert it to 20 volts or whatever to recharge your uh, laptop battery, okay? Okay, so that's the purpose of those things. And we'll get into transformers in a few weeks actually, so we'll really get into some more details of that later. Okay, we okay with that? Okay. Okay, so then if you saw the movie or you read anything related to the pre-session quiz, you've seen this, okay? So this is a parallel circuit. How is it parallel? Well, you can imagine that I often think of current starting at the battery. Now, really, the charges are already laid out along the wires. They're just ready for that potential difference to set up a field that they can respond to. But I cannot, you can often get away with saying, okay, imagine the current is leaving the battery and then it flows around the circuit and when it gets to the top junction there in the middle at the top, it splits up and some of it goes down through R1, resistor one, and some of it goes down through resistor two. And then it all comes back together here and it flows back to the battery. So there's I along this part of the circuit. Okay, and together I1 and I2 have to add up to I. In fact, this is what's known as the, uh, the junction rule. The sum of the currents coming into the junction have to be equal to the sum of the currents flowing out of a junction, always. That's just charge conservation. Okay, so using Ohm's law, we could say, well, I is V over R. This is the battery voltage divided by the equivalent resistance of those two resistors. And I1 is V over R1 and I2 is V over R2. And I'm claiming the Vs are all the same. That each one of those resistors gets the full battery voltage. Are we okay with that? Any questions on that? And how do you know? Well, you can look at resistor one, and you say, well, the top end of resistor one is directly connected to the positive terminal of the battery. The other end of resistor one is directly connected via a zero resistance, our assumption is zero resistance wire, to the negative terminal. So that full battery voltage is showing up across that resistor R1. And R2 is exactly the same. Top end is directly connected to the plus side of the battery. The other end is directly tied to the minus side. Therefore, it's got the full battery voltage across it as well. Are we okay with that? 
Okay, so if the v's are the same, then we can cancel them out and we get this nice equation. So in this case, we get 1 over REQ is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And of course, the one thing to remember is that when you do this calculation, you're really looking for REQ. The equation gives you 1 over REQ, so don't forget to flip it upside down when you're done, okay? Because you really want REQ. And that's where a few people went wrong on the pre-session quiz. Just remember to flip it upside down at the end, okay? And so we've tricked this battery. We said, we're going to trick this battery into sending out exactly the same current as it does in this circuit, but we're going to do it for a single resistor. So if we say we make the resistance of this resistor here the equivalent resistance of R1 and R2, then the battery can't tell the difference. It sends out exactly the same amount of current in this circuit as it does in that circuit. Okay, if one of our REQ is one of our R1 plus one of our R2. And then if there's 75 resistors in parallel, you can extend this sum all the way down to one over R75. Okay, so you can extend it as long as you want. And so there's a general result you can do here. For instance, if you have uh, two resistors in parallel, okay? <coughs> Take the smallest one, the smallest resistance value, okay? The equivalent resistance is always going to be less than the smaller of the two resistances, and it's somewhere between half of the smallest value and the smallest value, okay? So if we have six ohm resistor in parallel with something else, and the six is smaller than the something else, or at least not larger than it, then the equivalent resistance here is going to be somewhere between half of six, three, and six. And the closer R2 is to 6, the closer the equivalent resistance is to 3. And the closer R2 is to infinity, the closer the equivalent resistance is to 6. Okay? So that's a good rule of thumb. You're always going to get, you look at which one is smallest in your collection of 2. This only applies to 2. Well, there's a more, you can extend the rule, make it, you can come up with what the rule is for 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 resistors. But, um, that's how it works for two. Okay. Questions on that? So you can use that to check your answer. Okay. If you get two resistors in parallel, look for what's the smallest. Take half of it. Take the value. You got to be somewhere in between. You can't be outside of that range. You certainly can't be bigger. Okay. So uh, on the worksheet. It says, when you have more than one object, for instance, a lamp and a TV, plugged into an electrical socket in your house, are they connected in series or parallel? So in your house, how are things wired? That's really what the question is addressing. Are things wired in series or in parallel in your house? You plug in a lamp and a TV to the same outlet. They are in, <coughs> what are they in, Michelle? Okay, you think they're parallel? Okay, okay. Who agrees? Parallel. Anybody disagree? Okay, so things in your house generally are parallel. Exactly right. So this is how things work in your house. And the reason is because you design the TV to get 120 volts from the wall. And you design the light bulb to get 120 volts from the wall. And when you hook them up like this, in parallel with one another and with the wall socket, they're getting what they're designed for. Okay, so that's how it works. And as long as you don't hook up too many things in parallel, then the wall socket can cope with that. Okay? And if you try and hook up too many things, then the circuit breaker blows because you're trying to draw too much current. Okay, questions there? All right. Okay, two light bulbs, one marked 40 watts, one marked 100 watts are connected in parallel. Which bulb is brighter? Anybody want to go out there, put themselves on the line, make a prediction? Same? Okay. Okay? Same. Yeah? 100 watt? Okay. Who thinks? Same. Nobody. Who thinks? Well, a few people. 100 watt. Who thinks? 40 watt. You want to explain that? Okay, so it depends on how they're connected in the, in the, in the circuit. Okay, so uh, let's go back and look at that for a minute. So here's the circuit diagram. looks like this. Okay, so uh, if I put the 40 here and the 100 there, then the 40 is brighter. 
And if it's the 100 here and the 40 there, it's 100 brighter. Does it make a difference? OK, let's have a look. So here we go. They're here. And I apologize to people in the front row because this is very bright. Uh, so hope you brought your sunglasses. OK, so which is which? One of them is clearly brighter than the other one, right? The one on the left. OK, so these are hooked up to the wall socket. These act just like they act in your own house, OK? There's nothing special about light bulbs in this room versus in your apartment, <coughs> OK? They're the same light bulbs. It's the same wall socket stuff, same stuff coming out of the wall socket. It's exactly the same, OK? So which of those looks like the 100-watt bulb in your house, and which one looks like the 40-watt bulb in your house? The brighter one is the 100. That's why you bought the 100 at the store, because you wanted to be bright, because you're trying to read or something. Whereas the 40, you're using for something else, where you don't need as much light. OK, so. And it's not relevant which one of these is which, is it? Because they're in parallel with each other. They each get the 120 volts from the wall socket. Doesn't matter how they're hooked up, which one is which. Irrelevant. Okay, so you're used to that. You've seen it before. It acts in this room just like it does in your apartment, amazingly enough. Okay. Okay, okay so then we get to this. So then we um, have them in parallel, just like I did. And then we're going to unscrew the 40 watt bulb. When I do that, the 100 watt bulb will do what? This one here is the 40. I'm going to unscrew that. And you're going to watch that one get brighter, get dimmer, stay the same. And I sh maybe I should move this for a minute so you can actually see what the options are. That might be nice. OK, so we get 2 thirds for um, nothing and 23% for it gets brighter. OK, so let's see what happens. Put it back up again. Connect it again. OK, so I'm going to unscrew this one. That's the 40. Watch carefully this one. That one's off. The other one, what happened to it? The other one did what? Not, no, it didn't. <laughs> Nothing happened to it. It didn't get brighter at all. So why didn't it get brighter? Why shouldn't it get brighter? Maybe you saw it get brighter. It shouldn't have got brighter. I don't think it got brighter. Why shouldn't it get brighter then? Based on this. They each get the wall socket voltage. It's still getting the wall, it's not getting the wall socket voltage now because I closed the switch. But now it's getting the wall socket voltage. When it's in parallel with the 40, it's getting the wall socket voltage. Okay, this is how things work in your house. And there's the uh, circuit diagram for when you unscrew the light bulb. And that's the reason why it stays on, okay? Because there's still a path for the current to flow around the circuit. All right? Okay, so now we go to resistors in series. And once again, you've also seen this if you've done any prep for the pre session quiz, okay? And so now the current is the same everywhere in the series circuit. And so we can cancel that out of our equation. And in fact, what happens here is that the voltages have to add up. The voltage across each resistor, each light bulb, have to add up to the battery voltage. And if you think about the ski hill, that kind of makes sense, right? This is bringing you up through a certain change in height. No matter what set of trails you come, by, you come back down, you go back down through the same amount of height that you went up by, OK? So that's like the voltage. So voltage here plus the voltage there adds up to that voltage. And the currents are all the same. So it's opposite to what happens in the parallel system where the voltage is the same and the currents divide. OK, so in this case, we get a very simple relationship. Again, we can fool our battery by replacing these two resistors by a single resistor. And the battery doesn't know the difference as long as REQ equals R1 plus R2. Okay, you get a 4 ohm resistor and an 8 ohm resistor. Replace it by a single 12 ohm resistor, the battery can't tell the difference. OK, it sends out the same amount of current in each case. OK, are we OK with that? And series is just, there's one path to follow there. 
whatever current comes out of the battery has to go through <coughs> R1, has to then continue on to R2, and then goes back to the battery. So it's the same current everywhere. Now we're going to take our 100 watt bulb and our 40 watt bulb, and we will connect them in series with a standard electrical outlet. Which bulb is going to be brighter in this case? 40, 100, equally bright. Okay? So make our prediction there. Okay, so we got uh, <laughs> quarter U for the 40, 40% 40 for the 100, a third U for uh, equally bright. Okay, and 1% for um, some other answer. And actually somebody suggested another possible answer, which I probably should have included, which is um, it depends on what order they're connected in. Okay, do you come out of the wall socket from the, now this might give it away, right? It's the wall socket, so which side is positive, right? Half the time this side's positive, and the other half the other side's positive. So maybe the order doesn't matter much. So, um, Let's do it and see, okay? So these guys are on the opposite side, so they're not exactly the same light bulbs, but they are identical to the ones we had before. So they're here and here. And first we'll see if they're equally bright. Are they equally bright? Is it working? <coughs> Geez, it can't be even on. Hmm, maybe I haven't connected it right. What do you think? Is that second bulb even on? Is it? Oh, it's got a little glow to it, doesn't it? But it's not very bright, is it? Who would say they're equally bright? I don't think you could say that. They're not. All right. So clearly this one is the bright one in this case. OK. Um, I'm going to unscrew this one. I'm going to give it to an unbiased observer who is going to tell us the wattage that is stamped on the front. 40, 40 watts. 40 watts. This was the bright one. Okay? The brighter one, 40 <coughs> watts. Okay. Now, A, light bulbs are not designed to be used like this. Okay? Only crazy physicists would ever use light bulbs like this. Okay? So this is why they don't act like they're supposed to act, because they're not designed to be in a circuit in series with other light bulbs. All right? Uh, of course, there are some things that we use in the house which are designed to be in series and work fine in series, which would be what? What's a good example of series connections? Christmas lights, okay? Long chain of Christmas lights, okay? Little tiny LED lights, you get 30 of them in a, in a line. There's 120 volts across that line. Each one's getting four volts. So you design the light bulb to get four volts. Each one gets four volts, 30 of them in a chain. That adds up to 120 volts. Okay? So they designed that ahead of time. So this is not designed to look like this. So we've got to explain that. So we'll try that. The brightness is determined by the power dissipated in the bulb. Okay? That's not the same thing as the power stamped on the bulb. It is the same thing if the bulb is stamped 120 volts and it's getting 120 volts. But in series like this, neither one of these guys is getting the 120 volts it's designed to get. Okay? You have to share that 120 volts. And they do not share it equally. They would share it equally if they were the same resistance, which they are not. So I think a nice equation to look at, we have three different forms of the power equation, but a nice one in this case is I squared R because it's a series circuit, the current's the same, and therefore the power is going to be proportional to the resistance. We calculated the resistance of a 40 watt light bulb and a 100 watt light bulb in class last time. Okay? We calculated the resistance of the 100 watt bulb, 144 ohms at 120 volts. 360 ohms for the 40 watt bulb at 120 volts. Okay? We're going to make an assumption that the resistance is independent of temperature for now, which is wrong, but that's okay. We can get away with this for a little while. Okay? So, which one of these, based on that equation and these resistance values that you guys calculated last time, which one of those has a, has a larger power? The 40 watt. The 360 ohm bulb 
is going to dissipate two and a half times the power of the other one because the resistances are different by a factor of two and a half. Okay, so in the series circuit, bulbs or resistors in general share voltage according to their, to their resistance. In our circuit, our 100 watt bulb is getting approximately 30% of the voltage and the other one gets 70%. If you then look at power is V squared over R, then the 100 watt bulb is 0.3 of its usual voltage and you square that 0.3 to 0.09, that's where my 9% is. <coughs> so the 100 watt bulb is only about 9% as bright as it usually is. Well, it wasn't very bright, was it? The 40 watt bulb isn't too bad. Our calculation gets us 50%, that's squaring 0.7, okay? V squared over R, R is fixed, 0.7 squared gets you around 0.5, okay? So it's about 50% as bright. Uh, then now we're gonna take the uh, 100 watt bulb out. What happens to the 40 watt bulb? Make your prediction there. 40 watt bulb is going to turn off, get brighter, get dimmer, but stay on. Nothing happens to it. Okay. 61% say it gets brighter. All right. Here we go. I'm unscrewing uh, the 100 watt bulb. Okay, watch carefully at the 40. You got to look carefully in case, you know. Aha! What do you think? Got brighter? I don't think so. What's up with that? Who voted for that? Uh, it turns off. 17%. What does our circuit diagram look like? Let's have a look at that. Alex. Ah, yes, it's just like that. It's like I open a switch. You're exactly right. There's my circuit diagram, okay? You got a wire, battery, resistor. Okay, so can the, can the charge get all the way around the loop? No. Okay, that's, that's the effect of unscrewing that light bulb. You actually just open up a whole section of the circuit. It's completely disconnected your circuit. So what was completing the circuit before was the, res was the filament of that other light bulb, right? And we've taken that away, and that actually opens up a space in the circuit. You don't have a complete circuit, no current comes out. So this actually shows I, in this, there's no I. Forget I, there's no I anywhere. Current zero. Okay, are we okay with that? Okay, and in the parallel case, we open up a space in our circuit there too, but there was an alternate route, right, for that current to go all the way around the loop with the parallel case. It still had that light bulb filament it could go through. But here, there's no way to go completely around, so nothing flows at all. Okay. So then we get to here. Now we're really going to have some fun. Now we've got three identical bulbs connected in this circuit. And this is on your worksheet, too, so you get this picture on your worksheet. And I have two switches, right? No, I don't. On the worksheet, I think I have two switches. Is that right? Yeah. So this, yeah. So I'm going to close switch one. I'm going to leave switch two open. That means I'm going to leave this switch open. And switch one is down here. It's currently open. I'm going to close it. Okay. How do you think the brightnesses of the bulbs are going to compare? These are identical bulbs. How do you think they're going to compare? And I don't think I really ever addressed the issue of does it make a difference what order the bulbs are connected in in that series circuit? It's irrelevant because the battery looks at the total resistance of the circuit and then decides how much current to put out. So changing the order of the light bulbs doesn't change anything about the total resistance of the circuit. Okay, so back to this. Okay, so make your prediction there. Brightnesses of the bulbs. Okay, what about C? What about C in this one? Who knows what C is going to look like? Okay, these light bulbs are here. A, B, C. All right? What's going to happen with C? So 55% for uh, that, 20% for... Okay, so C. I'm going to turn it on, and we're going to see... Okay, so there we go. A, 
B. C is off. Anybody surprised? C is off. What if I had moved the switch to the other side of C? Would C be on? No. Switch can be anywhere in this branch, and it interrupts, it prevents charge from flowing along that whole branch. C is just off. So that's switch. That's just how you turn things off in your house, right? Open a switch. Uh, a and B, are they, which one's brighter? Equally bright. Because we have identical bulbs, so C is irrelevant. What kind of circuit do we have? A and B are connected in series. They're in series with each other. They're identical. They have the same current, same resistance. They got to have the same power, same brightness. Everything's the same. So A and the B are the same. C is off. OK, we're going to make a prediction here. OK, I'm going to close the switch, this switch. I'm going to give it away that C is going to come on, OK? C is going to be brighter than it used to be. All right? You're going to tell me what happens to A and B. OK, what does A do? What does B do? This is the last thing we're going to do. We're going to vote on this. I guess I should turn it on, right, before we go, so you can see the answer. And then you can puzzle, puzzle it over. A moment of truth. Let's see, anybody? Oh, we're all over the place, except for nine. Got, uh, nine got more votes than anything else. OK, here we go. Ready? Where the heck's the switch? Down here. OK, A and B equally bright. C is off. OK, here we go. Uh, this is going to come on. Let's see when I close this switch. Pay attention to A and B. A gets brighter. B gets dimmer. B and C are the same brightness as one another. OK, so we'll come back and talk about that on Friday.